Hi, Thomas from Entrack here. We are excited to have added MIDI loops to Entrack Studio. Today, I'm going to help you locate them and use them in a song on Entrack Studio for Windows. Also, on this video, I'm going to show you how to modify MIDI and step sequencer tracks. In addition, I'm going to show you what the transpose widget does on a MIDI track. These principles apply also for Mac, Android and iOS too. Okay, let's jump into this. So, first thing first, we want to open our loop browser. So you can do that in two ways. You can either click here the icon, loop browser, or you can go into view, loop browser, and there we go, it opens on the right. And it's opened all our loop, our fantastical loops. So here we've got all. So how it works, you can either filter by instrument, genre, key, BPM, or you can just search a song, I don't know, uh, uh, 808, there we go. And it'll find you all the audio for the 808 that have the name 808 inside. Or else it's divided in categories. So you have all audio, MIDI, beats, genres, instruments, add-ons, your folder, my folder, uh, BPM and songs. What I'm gonna show you today, however, is if you go into MIDI, I'm gonna show you uh, our new MIDI loops, especially our chords and progression. So we're gonna do MIDI, chords and progression, and let's go and download it. Here we go. Sooner than later, there we go. We've got them all downloaded. So now let's go back into MIDI. Let's go back to chords and progression. And as you can see, the menu is divided into major and minor scales. Uh, so you have A major, A minor, A sharp major, A sharp minor, and so on. Uh, what I'm going to do now is going to B minor. Uh, as you can see here, it's divided between chords and progressions. Let's go into chords. Chords, you will have the basic uh, chords for B minor. However, if you want more complex chords, you can go into the menu more chords. In here, you will find a vast variety of complex chords that you can use on your songs. Okay, let's see how to preview and import progressions. So here we are in our progression menu. So here you can see the name and on this side you can see the chord progression. To preview these, let's go and deselect the follow song BPM button. Perfect, so what happens is this little um, window appears and it shows you the preview, so it shows you the MIDI notes and you can play and stop the preview from this button here. Okay, let's go and see in more detail what the follow song BPM button does. So first of all, I'm just gonna go and change the BPM here. So I'm just gonna put it like 60, there we go. Um, I'm gonna play back the uh, the preview loop. Okay, and pay attention to what happens when I press this. So as you can see, that has actually changed the BPM of our preview into the BPM of our songs. Let's see now how to import a loop into your song. There are two ways really to do this. You can either double click. That will create a new track in your song. Or we can drag and drop. I'm going to drag and drop this melancholy. Actually, before doing that, I'm just going to make the song window a little bit smaller. I'm doing that by pressing control and moving the wheel on my mouse. So I'm going to import Melancholy 2. So what you can do is import it onto a new track or you can actually put it on the same track. So I'm going to put it on the same track because I want to do something quite particular. What I'm going to do is loop this section three times and then put this section in the middle of those. There we go. Okay, now I've got three. What I want to do ideally is put this as the third loop and then repeat this as a fourth. So to do that, I'm just going to select this one. As you can see, this is only selected. Right click on it, go all the way to, where is it? Here it is, ungroup parts. Now that moves independently while these move together. See? Okay, so that moves independently. I'm just going to move it down here. 
I'm going to move this one there, and then I'm going to move this one there. Okay, perfect. Next thing, I would like to listen to this in a loop, so I'm just going to drag up to there and up to there, and then press the loop button down here on our transport. Um, once I press this, it'll start playing back. Okay, very good. Um, it is a little bit slow for my taste, so I'm just going to bring back the BPM to 120. Uh, done that, I'll have to unselect this and bring that all the way back down. Okay, and I'm just going to expand a little bit more the window. Perfect. Okay, let's loop it again. One thing you might have noticed is this plus 11 up here. So what that means is that it's gone plus 11 semitones up. So how the MIDI loop works is that it's transposed from a C minor scale up to a B minor scale. So that's why it's gone plus 11 semitones upwards. We'll come back to that later when we want to do the bass line. Anyway, I'll show you how to move these around. Okay. Let's go and change the sound of the instrument. So we are right now we're on Stenway Grin Light. Let's go and change that. So we click here, uh, select, we open the select instrument menu. Uh, I'm going to go into pianos, electric piano, and I'm going to choose Rhodes. So let's have a listen to that now. Fantastic. Let's now add the bass line. So what I would like to do ideally, so this is our lead. Um, I would like the bass line to always be a Rhodes, but to actually just follow the um, the chords. So in order to do that, I can always use chords and progression in this way. So I added Just Sad 2 previously. What I can do is add Just Sad that I'll show you. <laughs> Is basically just the chords, just what I wanted. So let's move in that into a new track. There we go. So what I'm going to do here now is actually go a couple of octaves down. So one and two. There we go. And then I'm going to expand that to three again. I'm doing that. Select this. Ungroup the part. Move that part there. And then I'm going to go and select the chords for this section here. That is melancholy and pop it into there. There we go. Uh, I need to also remember to change the octaves on this one. Give it a couple of octaves down. So it should say minus 13. Yeah, that's correct. Let me explain why we see minus 13. So we've gone two octaves down. That means we went down the first octave to minus one. This was because the original loop was in C, but we imported it and transposed it into B, which is plus 11 semitones higher. So 11 minus 12 gives us minus 1, and then we went down the second octave, giving us minus 13. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is just slightly adjust the volume of our bass line. Okay, right, now I'd like to add a drum loop. So what we can do is go into add-ons in the loop browser. We can navigate to drum patterns. And now let's have a listen to a drum kit while we play back 
this part here. So let's go there. Okay, this loop has got me head banging, so I'm gonna add this into the track. There we go. Okay, good. Um, I'm quite happy with that um, pattern. I'm not massively happy about the sound of the drums, so let's go and change that. Okay, let's go into drums. We're in drum essentials, that's really good. Um, I'm kind of a electronics fan, and in this, we got the TR-808, so let's have a listen to that. <laughs> Now, I know that the TR-808 in this package has a better kick sound than that one. And I'll show you how to get into that. So go into note here, kick two, perfect. Oh, yes, I like that one. Uh, let's have a listen to that. Perfect. Okay, um, I think there's also a the sound of a open hi-hat. Yes. Let's try changing that to... Um, how about the cowbell? Let's have a listen to that. Interesting. Let's try the hand clap. Right, so now what I would like to do ideally, so as you can see, let me close this, this track is quite long, isn't it? And I would ideally like to take it all the way down there. Okay, uh, probably I went too far in. Yes, I did. Uh, let's just, there we go. Okay, let me just have a listen to that very end part. Perfect. Now, what I would like to do is change this pattern here. So how we can do that is basically going into the double clicking, going into the step sequence. So I'm going to do, instead of free run, I'm going to do playlist. Now look at what happened there. It's gone, hasn't it? What I can do is now add this pattern number four, like this. Aha! Awesome. Awesome. And then what I'm going to do is copy this pattern by clicking here. There we go. I'm going to have a look at this copy. And what I'm going to do is actually expand a little bit of this. Whoop. There we go. Now, that I'm going to keep. Yeah, and I'm going to eliminate everything else. There we go. So what I'm going to do is add that pattern into here and then add the fourth pattern. There we go. Now let's have a listen to that. And there we go, there we have it. It's a simple loop with a variance inside of it, uh, but done all entirely with the loop browser. So it's a massive, powerful tool. I really recommend to go and have a look in the add-on manager into MIDI, all of our MIDI loops. They are absolutely amazing. Uh, they're really, really good for starting points.
Um, yeah, so that's it for me. And uh, see you next time. Take care.